wave. Whew. What else would you expect from global warming? We're getting more of them and they're getting hotter. We know this because Bill Nye, the science guy tells us, and he wears a bow tie, which is a sure sign of super intelligence. We're gonna have this extreme heat and these crazy heat domes. Tonight, record-breaking heat, the dangerous and unusual weather hitting nearly every region of the United States, blasting through heat records already. The unprecedented magnitude of this is impossible to ignore. And I wanna go now to one of the world's top scientists who's been studying this issue, Bill Nye. What does all this mean as you synthesize it? Well, what it means is we need to curtail our use of fossil fuels. The, the words that we're going to hear over and over again, which is a record high today, another record broken. Computer operators have been able to tie extreme heat directly to climate change. Life-threatening heat across the country. More than 127 million Americans are on alert. It's just going to get hotter and hotter and worse and worse. What I'm saying is the planet's on f***ing fire. These reports could hardly be scarier and leave us in no doubt that heat waves are getting worse and more common, and that we are to blame. Anyone who says otherwise is anti-science and in the pay of fossil fuel companies. And official agencies are prepared to back up what Bill says. Look at these alarming EPA graphs. Since the 1960s, heat waves have been increasing. There's no room for doubt. Anyone who questions this is a climate denier is anti-science. And there's this worrying graph too from the US government's Climate Science Special Report, which the government claims shows record-setting daily temperatures in the United States. Cities, of course, will be hardest hit, and not just in the US. Here's a disturbing graph of the rise in maximum temperatures in Paris. Climate change must be true. Here it is in black and white, the actual science. Or is it? Let's look a little closer at the scientific data. This graph, put out by government agencies, does not, in fact, show temperatures. It shows the ratio of record high and low temperatures in what statisticians call a running record. Using this technique in any given time frame, records are more common in earlier years than later years, since records get harder to beat. But as fewer records are set, the ratio between highs and lows fluctuates more, giving us the spectacular effect of rising bars at the end of the graph. And this gives the misleading impression that heat waves are getting worse. But this is just a statistical quirk. The very same data, when viewed properly as what statisticians call an absolute record, looks like this. As we see on the bottom, extreme low temperatures have decreased slightly, which means the weather is milder. But what about the top? There is absolutely no sign of any upward trend in record high temperatures. This is government data, remember. In fact, it's clear from this that there were many more record highs being set in the 1930s than there are today. How about the other graph from the EPA? This too is meant to convince us that heat waves are increasing. This graph has been reproduced again and again on countless websites and news stories as irrefutable evidence from the EPA that the world is warming and temperatures are hitting record highs. But you might ask, why does this graph start in the 1960s, given that we have data that goes back much further? This is the reason. Here again, we have heat waves from the 1960s, this time a more detailed and accurate breakdown, the official annual heat wave index from NOAA. Sure enough, it shows a slight rise. That's what the EPA wants us to look at. But what happens if we pull out to show heat waves since the 1890s when this record began? It shows very clearly that there's been a massive decrease in heat waves since the 1930s. And that overall, there's been no trend up or down since the record began. Only by starting in the remarkably cold 1960s is it possible to make it look like there's an increase. Let's look at another graph from the EPA, showing the number of hot days per year in the US. Starting in the 1970s, it looks like it's rising and hitting record levels. But what happened before then? The EPA's data goes back to 1900 and shows that the first half of the 20th century had more hot days than we do today. And once again, it reached a peak in the 1930s. In other words, according to the government's own data, heat waves, are becoming less common, not more. The 1930s were called the Dust Bowl years for a reason. It was incredibly hot. In fact, in the 1930s, records were set for heat waves in half the states in the US, records that still have not been broken. Here's another graphic that gets little attention from the media. The US Climate Science Special Report looked at changes in the warmest temperatures comparing the first half of the 20th century with recent times. Where it's grown warmer, there's a red spot. Where it's grown less warm, a blue spot. As we see, blue overwhelmingly predominates. In other words, according to the government's own figures, for the vast majority of the US, the warmest temperatures in recent decades are lower than they were in the first half of the 20th century. 
the very opposite of what Bill Nye and others would have us believe. And by the way, to state the obvious, none of these various graphs suggest any correlation whatsoever between heat waves and the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. None. If you search on Google, it will still tell you that heat waves in the U.S. are increasing. But if you dig deeper, you will see that the report cited refers specifically to temperatures in cities. So how about the cities? Remember that graph of hot days getting hotter in Paris? Paris used to be a city of small cafes, bicycles, horses, and carts. Today, Paris is a city of cars, buses, trains, tower blocks, and concrete. In most cities in the world, over the past 120 years, as populations have exploded and life transformed, urban temperatures have risen steeply. Here's a satellite heat map of Paris. It shows that in summer, the city can be as much as five or six degrees Celsius warmer than the surrounding countryside. This is known as the urban heat island effect, and it has nothing to do with climate. What are we to conclude from all of this? What is shocking and disturbing is the degree to which government agencies will manipulate and misrepresent data in support of the climate agenda. What's equally telling is that far from challenging any of these lies, our mainstream media is doing everything it can to promote them don't get taken in by climate BS. Check the data yourself. I'm Tom Nelson, and this is Guerrilla Science. Please subscribe to our channel and donate. To carry on, we need your help.